Hi, in this video, we'll now talk about how we can apply what we have learned about subgame Nash equilibrium to other examples that are more interesting compared to what we have done. So in this example, it talks about the Stackerberg model for duopoly where we have already studied oligopoly when everyone not all the firms do not know everyone's actions so they all do things simultaneously but what if it was sequential where a firm now makes a decision after firm one makes its decision and so the conditions for cost quantity producing and stuff will be the same but now we know that firm, there will be one firm that makes the decision and firm 2 will counter that decision based on it. So now we can we can say that the profit function is this and suppose there is unit cost and inverse demand then it's the it will be like this. So this is the visualization of what's going down from one makes a decision q1 and from two will make a decision q2 and this results in this profit function for q1 and for player for firm one and from two so i hope this is clear and we shall move on so by the backwards induction outcome we first need to maximize from two one which is over here to maximize it we need we need to use the first order condition to maximize this which means we have to partial differentiate this with respect to q2 so because firm 2 can only produce q2 so q1 is like a constant that is already chosen so we we profit maximize and we see that q2 must equals to half of a minus c minus q1 Thus, the subgame perfect Nash e equilibrium of this game is when Q2 produces this, and so it's this you just need to sub this Q2 into here, and this will be the resulting profit. And Q1 strategy is now to produce Q a Q1. So now you have Q1's profit. So we already know what's Q2. So in terms of Q1. So we just need to sub that in and we see that it reduces this. So firm one needs to produce an output to maximize this. And so we again partial differentiate this with respect to Q1 now and equal to zero. Then the maximizer will be Q1 equals to half. A minus alpha minus C. And so the unique sum game Nash equilibrium is when Q1 produces half A minus C and Q2 produces this best response function to Q1. And this best response function will be just taking whatever this Q1 is and subbing it into here. And you can see now how this is different from when it's simultaneous game as in the previous video, previous two videos ago, I have shown that each firm would then put, if it was a perfect, if it was a simultaneous move game, then it will produce one third A minus C and the profits will be one night A minus C squared. So under the, our game now, firm one will actually have to produce more profit which obtains even more profit in this sequential game so it's somewhat like a first mover's advantage what is interesting to note is that the backwards induction outcome is actually q1 star and the response to this q1 star and the Nash equilibrium is actually a 
strategy profile and instead of having a fixed number here it is instead q1 star and r2 why is it r2 is because it can be any it can, the best response is actually a function of q1 and only that you so any of these r2 best response to q1 then it will not deviate so then q1 is fixed already because it has to be q1 star because once you have chosen the the q2 then q1 is fixed so this is like a best it will be a function whereas this is an outcome so that's all for that example in the economics sense we shall now look at a two-stage game where so we got player one playing one one player one and two playing one game first and maybe three and four or can we also be player one and two playing another game so for this two-stage game what we need is to find an outcome so play, let's just say it's different players then player one and two will choose and simultaneously choose an action and form some game outcome from these actions three and four observe it and then make their own action so the play will we can write it like this where three three and four of will take in functions from a1 and a2 and then after this player one will play player two will then play a1 star and a2 star so what does this multi-stage game means it's like your first game is a simultaneous you, your games one and game two are both simultaneous but it happens after this occurs so a this this happens first then you move on to this game but th so this game knows the knowledge of the previous game so let's take an example and we will be more clear on what is this multi-stage game so let's say two investors have deposited fifty thousand dollars into the bank and the bank is forced to stop at the first date and the investment will mature earlier in which only 80k will be recovered and if the bank allows the investment to go to date 2 then a total payout will be 200k so so this is what happens okay so the investors will be this if on the date one let's say three months later then the two investors can either withdraw so if both choose to withdraw then they'll split the thing evenly 40 40. but look at this are uh, they remember that they, they deposited 50 so it's actually a loss if one chooses to withdraw but the other doesn't then the one that chooses to withdraw breaks even at 50 but the one doesn't loses out 20k now same don't withdraw and withdraw but if they both choose to oh, hold on, then you get to go to the next stage. That's what it means. So this is one simultaneous move game. And this is like a second simultaneous move game, even though it's date one and date two. So now we get to move on to date two, where if both now withdraw, then one gets 100, both get 100, 100. So they will always, they will already earn money. Now, if you don't, um, one withdraw and one don't, then the one that withdraw earn even more. And the one don't break even. So it's still not too bad. And if they both don't, they still both earn 100 because the project matures already. And so we can now work backwards and we need to solve this simultaneous move game first. And in this case, the best scenario is date 2 with just strictly dominates don't. So the unique Nash equilibrium will then be withdraw withdraw which obtains 100k. So both of them, the best case scenario in this case is that they both withdraw. And then knowing that they'll, that they'll withdraw in this game where they can earn 100, we see that the don't, we see that this 100, 100 will become this next stage outcome. So this becomes 100, 100. So with this 100, 100 here, then the pure strategy Nash equilibrium is again either both withdraw at 40 or both don't at 100 100. 
So you have actually two SPNEs where both either withdraw or both do withdraw now and withdraw later. In the games where they withdraw early, then it's a bank run. And bank run just means that multiple investors just decided to withdraw before and withdraw early and the bank just defaults. So I can hope you can see how uh, a multi-stage game is instead just having multiple it could have se a sequential games inside one of this stage but it's not the same concept as a sequential and it's 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 it's, it's own concept in a sense where you play one game first and then you play the next game knowing the outcome of this game So that's all for this video. I've hoped you have enjoyed more examples about how to apply the game theory concepts that we have learned in the previous video. I'll catch you again in the next video where I go into further detail about this two-stage game into a multi-stage game. See you again. Bye.